coming up on today's episode of the AMA Drone Report. The AMA gears up to fight the effects of FAA overreach. GoPro Karma firmware update is coming this week. And the AMA suggests comments for remote ID and PRM. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world. In partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 200,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. I'm Sophie Herlock. The Academy of Model Aeronautics will soon announce the formation of a political action committee in order to fight back against the damaging FAA decision-making process, which is putting the model aviation community at risk. Many see the community as a pivotal foundation for those coming into the aviation world. In the AMA, Hobby industry and major players in the community say their confidence in the future of model aviation has been shaken. The AMA says they've been preparing and are ready to fight back aggressively. A website has already been established at modelaviationpack.com. There you can learn more about the committee, make donations to help support the AMA in their fight, as well as get valuable information regarding upcoming elections and candidate positions on model aviation. We here at Aero News fully support the AMA and will continue to closely follow this story. Now let's take a quick look at some interesting news making rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. It's time for today's Drone Minute. If you haven't gotten through all the pages of the FAA's 319 page remote ID NPRM, you're not alone. The AMA has published a short breakdown of the major aspects of the NPRM, with brief definitions to allow you to get the import of how restricted this legislation in its current form may be. You can find the breakdown on the AMA's blog at amablog.modelaircraft.org. Robotic Research is debuting the Pegasus Mini, a new football-sized transformable drone at CES 2020. The Mini is a smaller version of the original Pegasus, introduced in August, which established a new category of transformable unmanned autonomous vehicles that both drive on land and fly. These features provide a new range of capabilities to support commercial industry, first responders, law enforcement, and military customers. Leshtronics has designed a unique hardware platform which enables people to experience hands-free communication, picture and video functionality using a compact foldable drone. The FPQ-1 drone is intended to be used as a flying selfie stick and allows you to completely let go of your smartphone and it will stay exactly where it is in mid-air, hovering in place. According to the company, this is the first drone platform that does not require any external control systems. You've no doubt been hearing reports of unidentified drone swarms in middle America. And as of yet, there have been few facts to support the hysteria. However, a special mission aircraft has now been put to use to try and identify the drones. A modified Pilatus PC-12 is doing the job, and officials hope to have some real data shortly. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. GoPro announced it will be updating the firmware for its Karma drones this week. On January 1st, multiple pilots reported their aircraft was unable to correctly receive GPS signals required to calibrate the internal compass on the drone, effectively grounding the aircraft. GoPro says they've identified the cause and their engineering team is currently testing a resolution. Karma, like other consumer electronics products, relies on the World Magnetic Model to provide accurate positioning services. After an investigation, GoPro found the World Magnetic Model stored in Karma experienced an issue when it clicked over to 2020. GoPro says once they release the new firmware, they will let Karma users know how to update their drone on GoPro's blog. The AMA has published a template that may be used for your responses to the Remote ID NPRM. The template brings up the primary points of contention raised by so many in the industry. 
It also calls out the need for the FAA to create a pathway for remote ID compliance at AMA events and competitions, which may not take place at fixed flying sites. The template also doesn't ignore the fact the rule must consider hobbyists who fly in rural areas with little or no internet connectivity. The AMA also suggests the FAA should reconsider the proposal to register each aircraft, which will impose a cost and compliance burden on the model aviation community. The template, as well as a link to paste the comment on the federal website, can be found at amablog.modelaircraft.org. And that's it for this week's AMA Drone Report. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and check us out on Twitter and on Facebook. To get more information on the exciting hobby drone world, head over to modelaircraft.org. I'll see you tomorrow to wrap up the week with an episode of Airborne Unlimited.